I don't even know how you can describe that game. The ultimate joy, the ultimate heartbreak. Words fail me. Let's try and figure it all out today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. This is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Tuesday, September 12th, 2023, and I'm your host, John B. from gangreennation.com. Thanking you so much for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. Subscribe to the show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so that you'll get new episodes as soon as they're posted. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source, please give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, give this episode a big thumbs up. These things help us out and help other Jets fans find the show. Today's episode of Locked on Jets is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match of up to $100. We're breaking down the first game of the Jets season. The Jets beat the Bills 22 to 16 in overtime on a Xavier Gibson punt return touchdown. And that's not even the story of the game. That may be the craziest Jets game I've ever seen. I don't think there's ever been such a swing of emotion within a game. That was one of the greatest Jets wins I've ever seen. Uh, I've been watching the Jets for over three decades now. I can't come up with many games that are better than that. Maybe the Monday Monday Miracle against Miami back in 2000. Uh, It was just the ultimate swing of emotion. And the story number one from this game is Aaron Rodgers goes down with an injury and we don't know the results yet. Robert Sala at his post-game press conference struck a very, very ominous tone. And it does not sound like the Jets are expecting this injury news to be good. Not that any injury news is good. Robert Sala kind of bracing us for the worst case scenario, but we'll see what happens. Sometimes, and we've seen this the other way too, sometimes you don't think an injury is that serious and it turns out after tests, it's really serious. The reverse is also true. Sometimes you think an injury is going to knock a player out for a season and it's not as bad as you think after you get the test. We'll hope for that. And it's kind of amazing thinking of that game because you can't have more of an emotional roller coaster within one game than Jets fans had. The stadium was absolutely electric, bringing back memories of the New England game in 2009, that home opener, which was Rex Ryan's first home game as Jets head coach where even if you were watching it at home, you could feel the electricity in the stadium. It had that kind of atmosphere at MetLife Stadium. And then within a few plays, Aaron Rodgers goes down. Now the Jets, you know, the first play of the Jets immediately get this big run from Brees Hall. And it's like, oh my God, Brees is back. And that's been one of the questions. I've always expected Brees Hall to be really good, but I never wanted to put a lot of pressure on him. So I've been kind of bracing myself for maybe he's not going to look that explosive early in the season. Maybe it's going to take some time for the knee to get 100%. He rips off a 26 yard run immediately. And it's like, Oh my God, we have this great running back and he's himself again. And then within a few plays, Aaron Rodgers goes down and there's one play where he takes a hit. Uh, Mikai Becton threw a cut block and it wasn't really Becton's fault. Uh, I think the ball was supposed to get out quickly and just couldn't get, they couldn't get it out. But then, Dwayne Brown throws an awful block and Rodgers gets a hit and he goes down and he's hurt and he can't play. And it's not so much that it was going to cost the Jets the game. It's not even about this season. You know it. You felt it if you're a Jets fan. The sense that nothing can ever go right for this team. And I was feeling it too. And I can't, I couldn't believe it myself because I feel like my guard is always up with the Jets. That some, you know, I, I feel like I, I'm just don't, not going to let this team emotionally hurt me anymore. That I'm just going to expect the worst. I'm not going to get emotionally invested. But I felt like I was punched in the stomach when Rodgers went down. I mean, I couldn't believe it had happened. You know, we always talk, we always joke about the worst thing cap potentially happening to the Jets. We get this Hall of Fame quarterback. We have all this hype. We have all these good feelings. Finally, we're going to have a great season. And then within a couple of plays, he's gone. And it's like, nothing can ever go right. Why do we support this franchise? Why are we sports fans? When will our payoff ever come? Now, we still have a long way to go. But it did not feel good early in the game. Zach Wilson came in, and the Jets offense couldn't do anything. He throws a bad interception. Jets go into the locker room 13-3 down. I'm sorry. If you thought the Jets were winning that game, you were not being objective. But the defense, my goodness, the defense, what a performance forcing four Josh Allen turnovers in the second, uh, not in the second half, four Josh Allen t- turnovers in this game, pretty much carrying this team on its back. 
Brees Hall ripping off an 83-yard run in the early part of the game. And then when the chips were down in the fourth quarter, Zach Wilson hitting a couple passes, including one on a third down to extend the drive. And then Garrett Wilson maybe making the catch of the decade. I mean, what a catch. The ball was not well thrown by Zach. Zach made a couple plays on that drive. Unbelievable play. And then Michael Clemens forcing the fumble on Josh Allen. Jets get a field goal. We're going to win. And then the roller coaster takes another turn because Josh Allen drives the Bills into field goal range. And a field goal, 50-yarder, hits the crossbar and goes through. And you're thinking, oh, my goodness, it is happening. It's like I shouldn't have, It's It was almost the worst-case scenario because when Rodgers went down, I know I was I was kind of mentally checked out. I was like, okay, well, as bad as this is, at least I'm not going to get emotionally involved any further but then the Jets come back and they take the lead in the fourth quarter and you're like oh my goodness we are going to get a win and then you get the rug pulled out from under you because the Bills go down and get that field goal that just hits the crossbar and they're so lucky and then overtime comes and the Jets get a stop and Xavier Gibson runs the punt back for a touchdown and you know I think when Aaron Rodgers went down in this game if you're a longtime Jets fan you had to go back to one specific game and that was the 1999 season opener When the Jets were primed to make a Super Bowl run, they had just gone to the AFC Championship game the year before. They had won the AFC East the year before. They were 12-4 and in 98. The team that beat them, the only team that was better than them in 98, the Denver Broncos, had lost John Elway. And then in the first game, the first half of the first game, Vinny Testaverde suffers that Achilles injury and is gone for the season. And the season was lost at that point. And at least in that game, Vinny Testaverde made it to the second quarter. He didn't go down in the first drive. But Here's something people forget about that game. The Jets actually came back in the fourth quarter. They were behind against New England that day, and they came back and took the lead, and then the Patriots won the game on a last-second field goal. And, look, I'll never know what happened if the Jets had won that game, but I always remember it, and even though I was pretty young at the time, you know, I, I wasn't that old. I was a kid. I remember thinking, man, if they can just win this game, at least you could say, you know what, we rallied. We figured out a way to get it done. And that, you know, sometimes that's a launching point. Sometimes that's the type of thing that can galvanize a football team. And I, I, the 99 season may have just gone the exact same way. They may have just won one more game. But I'll never f- forget wondering what would have happened if the Jets had won that first game. Maybe it would have been a rallying point for the team. This is the type of game, you know, it, you never want to overreact to, react to week one. I said that on the preview show. That preview show feels like a really long time ago, even though it was posted just yesterday. But what a victory for this team. One of the best Jets wins I've ever seen. What a gut check. What a team performance. Because you could feel it, the coaching staff. You could see it in Robert Sala's eyes in the first quarter. You could just feel it in the crowd. You could see it on the field that that team felt like it had lost everything. And yet they somehow rallied. They somehow figured out a way to make it happen. And there's the tangible point to this. They got a win against their biggest competition in the division. They banked a win. They sent Buffalo to a loss. That's important. It's important for tiebreakers. It's important for your division record. It's important for head-to-head. That's important tangibly, but intangibly. You rallied. when you. I mean, that has got to be the most devastating in-game injury any NFL team has suffered in a really long time. I understand you lose your quarterback. I understand teams have lost their quarterback in the season. But after – you know not making the playoffs since 2010 after all the excitement i can't compare it to anything and the jets still somehow went out and figured out a way to win this game and maybe that's the type of thing that sets you up for a big season now of course we're hoping we get good news on aaron Rodgers, or at least not the worst news on aaron Rodgers tomorrow when the jets will likely run tests and give us a more concrete update But what can the Jets take from this game? Well, we've kind of talked about how this game could be a galvanizing force, but the Jets did show us a roadmap to victory. And we're going to discuss that as we continue ahead here on this Tuesday edition of the Locked On Jets podcast. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready for the new NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. So if you're a little upset about what's happened with Aaron Rodgers, at least that's something you can do. I'm not sure I would bet on the Jets right now. There's a lot that's up in the air with this team. But still, all customers who bet $5 and get will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. We don't know who's going to be playing quarterback for the Jets this coming Sunday when they travel to Dallas and take on the Cowboys, but it's an afternoon game. So if you're out of market and the game's not being shown in your area, that'll help you out. Again, 
betting five dollars get you one hundred dollars off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. It's the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen or first watch every day. Big shout out to you every day. And if you're new to the show, I know we probably have a lot of new people tuning in today because of what happened as the Jets beat the Buffalo Bills 22 to 16. And somehow that's not the story of the game. The story of the game is Aaron Rodgers. So if you're new to the show, this is a daily podcast covering the New York Jets. We have new episodes each day, Monday through Friday. And this episodes as needed through the week. And I'm sure we're going to have a bonus episode on Tuesday once we find out the situation with Aaron Rodgers. What can we take from this game? You know, I kind of alluded to it in the first segment that this can be the type of game that's a galvanizing force for a team. That like it shows that this team overcame so much adversity. This is one of the greatest Jets wins in franchise history, in my view. And I may be too emotional to give you an accurate portrayal of what's happening or but I, I just can't get over that the Jets won this game. And I think if you thought the Jets were winning that game at halftime, you were lying or you weren't being objective because I don't think there was any reason to think the Jets could come back and win this game. So what did we learn from this game? Well, I think one of the biggest takeaways, and I discussed it a bit, is Brees Hall looks like himself again. And that's a really important thing. And the reason that's a really important thing is this is the formula the Jets used last year. Very easy to forget this, but the Jets were – off to a 5-2 and two start at the point Brees went down last year. And they were dealing with the, with erratic quarterback play out of Zach Wilson. And again, this was pretty erratic quarterback play out of Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson threw an ugly interception in the first half and then was kind of afraid to throw the ball down the field. I mean, I noticed a couple times where he was just – they were you know, Troy Aikman and Joe Buck were kind of calling them screen passes. It looked like he was just immediately checking down while receivers were running routes. I think a lot of those plays were not designed screens. Zach Wilson was kind of afraid to throw the ball down the field. And then he hit some huge passes. He hit some clutch passes in the drive, uh, a key drive in the fourth quarter where the Jets scored the touchdown on the spectacular Garrett Wilson catch. But the Jets were able to work around Zach Wilson's inconsistency last year when they had Brees Hall. And Brees Hall being back and Brees Hall looking that good, where he's at 100 yards after two carries, he's ripping off huge run after huge run. That's a big deal because there was a formula for the Jets to win games last year. And you know what? I go back to 2019 and I distinctly remember, I'm sorry, it was 20. Yeah, it was 2019. That was when Sam Darnold got mono. And I distinctly remember it happened after the first game of the season. And I, people got mad at me when I said this, I think I was right. And I stand by it. I told you at that point, the season was over. I will tell you at this point, and I'm, I'm praying, I'm hoping that things aren't as bad with Aaron Rodgers as we fear, but this game shows you, the season's not over, even if we get the worst news with Aaron Rodgers. Now, the expectations, I think, change. I think the Jets' likelihood of making a deep run, being one of the great teams in the NFL, that changes. But the Jets just went out and beat what's expected to be a top three team in the AFC without Aaron Rodgers. So what does that tell me? There's never a guarantee in the NFL. But it tells me that this team can win games. This team won games last year before Brees Hall went down. And I don't think we ever really paid enough attention to it. I don't think that that injury ever got its due in the fan base for how significant it was, because that was the point where things started to fall apart. Nobody really noticed that Zach Wilson was really up and down prior to Brees Hall's injury because the Jets were winning games because he was so good that he was carrying the offense on his back. And he looks like, I mean, he looks like a million bucks in this game. He looks like the kind of running back. And you've seen it across the NFL this year teams are hesitant to pay running backs and with good reason, because it's not a high value position in many instances, your running backs are as good as they're blocking. Brees Hall's different. Brees Hall is different. My friends, he's the guy who can carry an offense on his back. Now, if we get Aaron Rodgers back and we get Brees Hall and we, this defense, which played such a good game, this defense, this just decided we're not losing this game. And you know, they had the rough moments in the late in the fourth quarter when they allowed the field goal and, you know, it kind of reminded me of like a Rex Ryan defense where they're dominant, except for the, when they're trying to close it out in the fourth quarter. But then they got went out in overtime and got immediately forced to punt, which allowed Xavier Gibson to return it for a touchdown. This team's got a formula to win. Strong running game behind Brees and Dalvin Cook maybe here and there. And I do feel like the Jets were maybe keeping Brees on a pitch count. You saw Dalvin Cook. It felt like a little bit too much, but you got to remember, we're trying to preserve Brees for the long haul here. And Dalvin Cook, who you know looked very up and down in this game, 
you know, I think his carries will likely go down as we go get deeper into the season. And it's going to be all about priest and this defense, this defensive line. I mean, they dominated. I mean, they were in Josh Allen's face. I mean, one interception was because Quinn and Williams was, was up on, it was up in his face, get, generating a pressure Michael Clemens forcing the huge fumble in the fourth quarter, which allowed the jets to get the lead. And then you just hope for good special teams. Greg Zerline makes all his field goals and Xavier Gibson, the rookie, the star rookie, the guy who was the hero of the game, you know, one of many heroes of the game, but Xavier Gibson running back a punt and the jets, you know, maybe the jets can make this work without a quarterback. You know, your super bowl hopes maybe aren't as high as they used to be, but what a, it's just an unbelievable win. I, I can't even believe that I, I, it, words fail sometimes. Words are failing me right now because that was such an inspiring victory for the New York Jets. I mean, if you're a Jets fan, you know we'd never win this game. You know that the Jets just lay down. You've, you've, it's, in, it's embedded in the Jets' culture that when they suffer a devastating moment like Aaron Rodgers going, getting hurt, they lay down and they get blown out. And this team did not. This team kept fighting. This team showed so much fight. I, I, I can't get over how proud I am of this football team. And ahead here on the Lockdown Jets podcast, we're going to close out this Tuesday episode, and we're going to discuss some of the players who were heroes in this game. And there are an awful lot of them. That's ahead here on this Tuesday Locked On Jets episode. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest independent-owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you versus the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more or less than two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Uh, this week on Prize Picks, you can bet Saquon Barkley for more than 60 yards and Patrick Mahomes for more than two passing touchdowns. You can bet Justin Jefferson for less than 100 yards and Lamar Jackson for more than one passing touchdown. Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts, like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's Prize Picks, daily fantasy. This is the Locked On Jets podcast, breaking down what was just an incredible game, just the ultimate roller coaster of emotions as the Jets lose Aaron Rodgers, but somehow defeat the Buffalo Bills 22 to 16 in overtime. Let's talk some of the heroes. And I think you have to start with the man who won the game in overtime with a 65 yard punt return touchdown. And that's Xavier Gibson. And I have to tell you, and I'm sure if you've been a Jets fan for a long time, I have had some really, really negative memories of returners through the years. I mean, I could go back to Justin Miller in 2005, who essentially cost them a game against the Jacksonville Jaguars, a game that really resonates because that was a game where the Jets lost both their starting quarterback, Chad Pennington, and their backup quarterback, Jay Fiedler, for the season. And that was a season where the Jets had Super Bowl expectations every single time, man. It feels like every single time the Jets have Super Bowl expectations, the quarterback gets hurt. Vinny in 99, Pennington and Fiedler in 05. But unlike, in that, unlike the 99 game where the Jets lost at the end and not only live game where a rookie punt returner cost them the game xavier gibson wins the game for the jets with a 65 yard punt return in overtime he has come such a long way remember in preseason the jets played that first game the hall of fame game against the cleveland browns and the first time we saw xavier gibson return a punt he dropped it we dropped it out of bounds he has come such a long way i think you have to look to the defense i mean what a performance against josh allen forcing four turnovers and three of them were interceptions by jordan whitehead and the first one, I think, was kind of like what's known as an arm punt where Allen just kind of threw it down the field and it was kind of like a third down play and it was an easy catch for Whitehead. The second one was a nice break by Whitehead. The third one was a spectacular play where he undercut a route and he was it was like it was like a cover two and the Bills ran the perfect route combination. They ran what's known as a cover two beating route combination because it's so difficult to defend in the play the Jets were running, but Whitehead somehow undercut it. Jordan Whitehead, a guy who I've been critical of through the years, delivers Quincy Williams first game with a new contract we've seen bad Quincy Williams we've seen good Quincy Williams this was great Quincy Williams all over the field finishes the game with 10 tackles breaks up a pass one tackle for a loss an outstanding performance by Quincy Williams he plays like that again he's going to the Pro Bowl now we'll see if he continues it because we've seen great Quincy Williams games in the past followed up by things that weren't so great but 
excellent start to Quincy Williams' season. Maybe is this his breakout season? Well, we can certainly dream of that. Certainly can hope so. The defensive line, I, there are just so many guys who played well on the defensive line for this team. Uh, five sacks of Josh Allen, one by John Franklin Myers, one by Jermaine Johnson, who was looking to have a breakout second season. Al Woods got into the mix. Uh, just an outstanding performance. Quinn and Williams did not have a sack, but had a tackle for a loss. Bad, uh, it was just a really solid performance all the way around by, by this defense. Quinton Jefferson, a pair of sacks. Michael Clemens forcing the fumble. The Jets defensive line is supposed to be one of the strengths of this unit. It showed up in a big way in this one. And DJ Reed, who got beaten for a couple times in that last drive of regulation, made some big plays in overtime. He had some huge passes defense. The Jets did not have Sauce Gardner follow uh, Stefan Diggs on a lot of key downs. They trusted DJ Reed, and DJ Reed really held up in some key spots on defense. And then you go to the offensive side of the ball. I already talked about Brees Hall, who was over 100 yards after two carries. He finishes with 127 yards on 10 carries. So the Jets kept him on a pitch count. He still made it work. He still went for 127 yards. How big is that? Alan Lazard had a huge third down conversion on a key Jets touchdown drive in the fourth quarter. And then Garrett Wilson making this spectacular catch on a throw that wasn't that great by Zach Wilson, but made the play. And Zach Wilson, and not even evening overall, Jets had lost this game. It might be a different story. He did enough. Jets got enough out of him. And in a world where the Jets are going to have to play without Aaron Rodgers, it's going to be getting back to what they did in October of last year, leaning on Brees Hall, leaning on the defense, and just hoping to get enough out of Zach Wilson. It's going to be a long road ahead for Zach if Aaron Rodgers is gone. But Jets figured out a way to beat one of the best teams in the AFC this year. And now we wait because – the story's not over of tonight. And one, one thing I'll encourage you to do is there's nothing we can learn about Aaron Rodgers tonight. There's nothing you can do about it. So enjoy one of the great wins you'll ever see the Jets have. Because tomorrow the news may not be so good. Or maybe it will be good. Maybe it'll surprise us. But wins like this don't come around often. So at least for one night, at least for one day, at least until you get some bad news, try and appreciate what an inspiring win this was. This is, again, I'm going to keep saying it and because it's true. This is one of the greatest Jets wins I've ever seen. And if nothing else, they've shown that even without Aaron Rodgers, this team's not going to be an easy out. They went toe-to-toe with one of the best teams in the AFC and came away with a victory without their starting quarterback, without their Hall of Fame quarterback. We'll see what it means. I don't know what's going to come next. I think I'm probably too emotional to tell you what's to come next. I'm too emotional to even think through the next steps. We'll just hope for the best because we got an amazing victory tonight. And I will tell you, I'm not going to be available all day tomorrow. As soon as we find out about Aaron Rodgers, though, and as soon as I'm available, I'll try and get a podcast up to break down what we're dealing with. But until then, that's all. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source, give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give this episode a big thumbs up. These things help us out, help other Jets fans find the show. Enjoy your Tuesday. We'll be back after we find out what's going on with Aaron Rodgers. Until then, take care, everybody.